זה המחקר, הוא התפרסם לפני שבועות ספורים. This is the report, and it has been published several weeks ago, and it is open to the public on our website, the INSS website. And over the next few minutes, I will show you some of the findings, insights, and recommendations of the study. And right after me, you will um, you will be uh, introduced to a panel uh, moderated by Ambassador Dan Shapiro, who will talk about some of these issues from the American Jews' perspective. I hope that engaging in this issue as part of this conference will help the dear distinguished guests in the audience to continue and be curious on this subject. And I would like to begin with asking why this is even a national security issue and to provide two answers. First of all, instrumentally speaking, the United States jury has had a crucial contribution to the establishment of the State of Israel, and it continues. It continues to contribute to its development, security, and resilience. Such this contribution is conducted through strengthening the special relationships between Israel and the United States, through direct contribution and donation to the building of this country and this society, and also indirect impact around the world. In this way, the U.S. jury significantly contributes to every matter and every aspect of national security on this slide. Also, the relationship between the two Jewish communities in Israel and the United States are in themselves a shaping factor of the security and future of the Jewish people it, as a whole. The matter of the Jewish state and democratic state's character is impacted by the relationship with the Jewish uh, people in the diaspora. Before I talk about the relationship between the two communities, I would like to introduce the American Jews to you in a few words. And of course, this is very superficial, but this is crucial for the rest of my presentation. In the world today, there are 14 and a half million Jews under halachic definition. 85% of them are living in Israel or in the United States. In addition to the 5.7 million Jews who are Jews by halacha, about, uh, about a million other other people live in the United States who define themselves as Jews and are actually descendants of intermarriage. The U.S. Jewish community is a small minority, just 2% of the total population of the United States, but it has much impact on American society in all areas of life. Of course, it is not this, the Jews of America are not just one community, all unified. Its internal structure is very different from Israeli society. 90% of American Jews are not Orthodox and are either reform or conservative or non-affiliated. The demographic trends of this community are affected by two main factors. One is the low birth rate of American Jews um, who are not part of the Orthodox sector. And the second is the high rate of intermarriage, about 60%. And therefore, one of the greatest challenges facing this community is continuity. Ideologically speaking, the United States jury is the most liberal group in the United States and the liberal values are manifest in political positions as well as in voting patterns. More than 70% of Jewish Americans support the Democrats, whereas the Republicans are supported by less than 30%. Israel has a key position, a key aspect of the personal and collective identity of American Jews. More than 85% of American Jews define Israel as an important part of their identity. However, among the younger generation and among those whose religious affiliation is low, there is a larger party, a larger group that do not see Israel as part of its identity. And this was also discussed by Mr. Herzog. And now I'd like to compare briefly the Jewish communities in Israel and in the United States. The two communities are very different from one another in various aspects, and please forgive me for making quite making generalizations. So most of the United States Jews are not orthodox. They tend to be liberal or moderate and are either central or left-wing in their political stances. In Israel, on the other hand, there is a very small representation of non-orthodox Jews, and Israeli society is far more conservative and much more center-right in its political positions. These gaps are the basis for most disputes and disagreements between Israel and the United States Jews when it comes to religion and the state. There was a, there is a huge issue. Of course, uh, in 2017, we had the uh, Kotel, the matter of the Western Wall, 
where they wanted to have equal prayer on the southern part of the Western Wall. There's also the matter of the new conversion law. These steps are and, and others have, are a problem for, Ju for U.S. Jews. Some of them see other steps as non-democratic, such as the nation-state law. Politically speaking, many of them criticize Israeli policy on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and expected to strive for peace and pursue peace. We have seen on the Israeli side ignorance and even disinterest when it comes to the American jury. This is not being learned in the education system, despite what we just heard it is yet to go into the education system. The media doesn't engage in it so much, and it is certainly not seen as a matter of national security. Israel and its many other burning issues are at the center, and the Jews of the diaspora are a sort of uh, far and distant periphery. In the Israeli public, there are several perceptions about American Jews. The ultra-Orthodox feel hostile towards the non-Orthodox Jews in the United States. The religious Zionists feel that they should be here in uh, Israel, and also the liberal, uh, the liberal opinion that they have adopted is something that is sometimes uh, seen as uh, controversial, but again, the Jews in Israel are uh, somewhat disinterested. Uh, the Jewish uh, community in the United States does engage a lot in Israel, but their understanding and their, their familiarity with Israel tends to be superficial and partial. Even today, many American Jews support Israel unconditionally. However, many others criticize Israel's policy and how it conducts itself in the various aspects I talked about before. The problem is that these days, the sense of alienation and uh, hostility towards Israel seems to be increasing. These views seem more common among the non-religious young Jews who have liberal progressive positions. And now I'd like to begin, go back to what I said at the beginning and say that the relationship between the two communities is a matter of national security that may form our future as a state and a nation. The communities in Israel and the United States are actually the pillars of the Jewish people in the current day and age. And these two pillars are two extraordinary success stories, and they are impacting one another. The relationship between them is a significant anchor to ensuring the security and prosperity of both these two communities and the entire Jewish people. These two communities are facing mostly internal challenges that related to their future and their identity. Israel needs a point of balance between the different groups that comprise Israeli society and a balancing of the tension between its being Jewish and democratic, whereas the American Jews face the challenge of continuity, cohesion, and ensuring their future while balancing with it the unique characteristics they have and the openness and integration into American society. The relationship between the two communities shows that there is growing alienation, there is less affiliation, and as Mr. Herzog says, we are seeing demographic and social processes as well as contemporary political considerations in Israel, the United States, and among the Jews there. But the difference in the trends in both communities also stem from significant gaps. There are not enough bridges between the communities. There is mutual ignorance and less, and not enough discourse. But this is the bad news. The good news is what there is to be done in order to change this direction and to make a difference in the long run. And with this, I'll, change, I'll end. In order to create a systemic long-term change in the relationship between Israel and the American Jewish communities, there is a need to make a fundamental change in the views of the public and of the leadership. We, we would like to propose an outline of reconstructing the relationship between the two communities, that each side can help the other coping with their, cha cope with their challenges. Such a step will have to engage in education and knowledge, also experiential, like birthright, but on both sides, meeting one another personally, having a shared discourse, but also 
updating our shared stories and doing things together for both communities. In order to put into place this move, we need to actually organize ourselves nationally, have a large, broad coalition in Israel and the United States and other communities in the diaspora. We need to have an actual national directorate that will engage in coordinating and directing these resources. And now I would like to ask Ambassador Dan Shapiro and the members of the panel to continue and discuss the perspective, the relationship between the two communities from the American Jewish, Jewish perspective. So, Dan Shapiro, Jonathan, and all members of the panel, the floor is yours. Ambassador Dan Shapiro, Ambas um, Ms. Jane Eisner, Mr. Jonathan Greenblatt, and Ms. Shira Rodderman is the panel for today. Well, thank you. Hello? Can you hear? Uh, thank you, Shahar, for presenting uh, the findings of the study. Uh, and good afternoon and welcome, everybody. Thank uh, uh, all our panelists here. Uh, Shira Ruderman, the executive director uh, of the Ruderman Family Foundation, uh, who include uh, strengthening relations between Israel and uh, the American Jewish community is one of its primary focuses of work. Uh, Jane Eisner, uh, the uh, editor-in-chief of The Forward, a uh, leading uh, newspaper uh, uh, publication in the Jewish community. Uh, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and national director uh, of the Anti-Defamation League. Uh, one of the, the, the uh, leading organizations in American Jewish life. Uh, grateful for all of you for being here. Uh, brief anecdote, just from my own period of time as ambass U.S. ambassador here, uh, I always met with Jewish organizations and Jewish delegations of every stripe that came to visit, and I, of course, knew oh, no, no other American community that was as committed and dedicated to Israel as the Jewish community. Uh, but I was often struck by the profound lack of mutual understanding between those very delegations and the Israelis they, they came to visit, including some of Israel's most uh, sophisticated, uh, including uh, uh, elites. Um, and then when we would have moments of crisis, the, the decision to cancel the Kotel Agreement, or when many American Jews supported uh, the Iran nuclear agreement that President Obama signed, although President, while President, or Prime Minister Netanyahu called it an existential threat, we often lacked a common language uh, to bridge those differences. So there's no doubt that there's mutual responsibility uh, to bridge those gaps. Uh, and I always made that clear to the American Jewish delegations. You can't just come to Israel and make demands without understanding uh, the Israeli perspective. But in my conversations with Israeli political leaders, I often emphasized, uh, as our study does, the major contributions of the American Jewish community uh, to Israel's national security, including its bilateral relationship with the United States. And my argument to them was that as this study demonstrates, Israel's interests, including its national security, uh, will be served by decisions that strengthen the bonds with the American Jewish community and will be weakened uh, by decisions uh, that harm those, harm those relations. The opportunity we have today uh, is to present for an Israeli audience uh, the perspectives of three leaders in and very close observers uh, of the American Jewish community, each with their own very deep ties to Israel, on how these challenges look from an American Jewish perspective, including what steps and policies by the Israeli government and people might contribute uh, to strengthening that pillar uh, of uh, the people-to-people -people relationship and the bilateral relationship. Uh, and so I'm going to start by asking each of our panelists uh, to respond to Shachar's presentation uh, of the, re the research uh, that the INSS has just published with an open question. Uh, I'll, sure, I'll start with you. And the, the question for each of you is, are we really facing a crisis uh, between these two communities? How severe is it? How do those challenges look from the perspective of an American Jew in New York or Boston or Chicago or Dallas? Uh, and why is that a national security matter for Israel? Shira. Wow, a lot of uh, good questions. First, I just want to say good afternoon and thank you for having us here. I do want to take the opportunity to thank the INSS team and being such a fantastic partner and you included. Um, I am an optimist, like Bougie uh, said earlier, from his point of view. I think to use the word crisis uh, makes things uh, look and feel very negative. And when you have a negative uh, perspective, I think it's very hard to engage and come to a conversation in order to find solutions. Number two, it is not the first time 
that American Jewry did not see eye to eye with Israel. We had other moments in history uh, between the two communities, if we call it two communities, uh, that we had times to see apart, including in the time of the establishment of the State of Israel. So I do think that we have a challenging time um, that is based, as Shaha presented, on many, many different reasons. Some of them are domestic reasons for the American Jewry that has to do with their communal life, with their um, being an American and a minority within uh, the country they live in. Aside to that, the changes in the State of Israel, not just regarding our policies, we are not a country in crisis any longer. We're not the common uh, project that we had with American Jewry. We are established, sustainable, strong country uh, that has its own politics, dynamics, and issues. And as a result of it, we see things very different. So now the question is, uh, and I truly think there are two parallel roads happening in this conversation, that at times we try to make it one, if Israel will do X, like in the cartel, we'll solve the problem. My personal opinion is that it's not working like that. American jury has to get together internally and understand and maybe define and decide what is their role in Jewish life with regards to Israel, which is not that simple and clear today. Aside from that, the state of Israel has to stand loud and clear and understand that we have two roles, not one. We are a state for all of our citizens, which has its own political issues. They're not necessarily the same conversation as being the homeland for the Jewish people. What does it mean? Where is the framework for us to work together? Do we have not just a common language, which we're lacking, we don't have a common goal today. We did have a common goal for seven years. It was to establish the state of Israel and make it work. And I don't think we could do it the same way without American Jewry. American Jewry is prominent in every aspect of Israeli life, from culture to security to um, health and name it. But in the same time, we have to look into the future. And if we don't do that, it will be very hard to come to a conversation and finding solutions and the last thing I would say, we decided, and I'm not quite sure why, that the solutions that we're trying to reach are in the hardest issues, which is religion. I mean, just imagine for one minute to speak about the peace process from starting with Jerusalem. We all know it doesn't work. Let's start first building a common goal, a common language, have a framework, decide who represent the framework, because it's not clear by both sides, and then decide how to find solutions. Great, and we'll talk about what some of those solutions might be. Jane, same question to you. Uh, a crisis, uh, if so, how severe? Is it a crisis, and if so, how severe? How does it look from uh, the perspective of the community that you write about so frequently? Well, thank you very much. Um, I agree with Shira. It's very difficult to talk about a crisis without really defining that. I would say this, I think that um, there is um, a real gap, as we've no noted, in understanding each other. And I think that the American Jewish community is undergoing its own changes. You're absolutely right. We have to decide what we want to be and what our role should be in Israel. And I look back at 2018 and particularly the events of October 27th, 2018, when 11 Jews were massacred uh, in Pittsburgh uh, while they were at prayer. And I think we will look back at that moment as, um, as a real turning point, not only in the development of the American Jewish identity, but also in our relationship with Israel. I think you saw after that horrific event um, a, a real dichotomy between what, how Israel perceives Jewish hatred and its uh, role to combat that and what happened in America. You know, the, the um, attack in Pittsburgh was not about Israel. <laughs> it was about the fact that the deranged shooter uh, hated Jews because Jews loved immigrants, because they uh, supported Hias and the attempts to, to 
to bring immigrants to America and to fortify America's pluralistic identity. Um, and what we saw after that in the, in the days uh, following, I think was just a remarkable display of a new kind of vernacular uh, that is defining the American Jewish experience. You saw people coming together um, in, in protest, creating their own rituals using the, the Kriya. They were, the, the protesters all brought together, uh, were given little pieces of black paper and, and told to tear it at a certain time. You saw them singing Jewish songs. Um, and all of this, all of this was broadcast live on CNN. Um, the Friday after the massacre, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette the whole front page was devoted to, um, to, to uh, publishing the Mourner's Kaddish, the first few words in the Hebrew letters. Now, I don't ever remember a time when, um, uh, when a, um, a newspaper serving the general public did anything like that. And who was the editor of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette? A terrific journalist named David Shripman. He would be the first to say he was a very secular Jew, married to a non-Jew, whose daughter, by the way, is studying to be a reform rabbi. But in all of those categories, you, you might look at that family and say, oh, they're lost. They're lost to the Jewish people because they're intermarried, and what do you mean a reform woman rabbi? But in fact, they did a remarkable thing by showing the world this is how we mourned. And I think that we're seeing this kind of melding of a social justice um, uh, mission. Um, I have to say it is coming also at a time when there's a huge majority of American Jews who um, are tr truly uh, worried about President Trump and many, many who are truly worried about the continuing occupation of the Palestinian lands. And I think those two things have really solidified um, a new approach for American Jews that we need to explain ourselves and do something with and then work to create much more communication with Israel to strengthen this bond. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you the same, more or less the same question. Do you see uh, a crisis emerging uh, that uh, is uh, reaching irreparable uh, depths, as some people have described it? Do you see something more fluid, more in keeping with historical uh, trends in this relationship that obviously requires attention? How would you characterize it? Well, I think, first of all, thank you, Dan, for having me, and thank you, Amos, for once again running what's really a brilliant conference that brings together so many important people and perspectives. It's notable that a conference on national security in Israel is talking about the relationship with the diaspora, which I do think is of strategic concern to both sides. Uh, I would agree with my fellow panelists that I don't like the term crisis. I think a challenge is a more appropriate way to think about this, but there absolutely are real issues that need to be addressed. I mean, on the one hand, I looked at that survey and thought, here are two communities who are really developing their own sense of identity. And much as the way that Shahar presented it, you know, I think the, the Jewish-Israeli community is more confident, more security-minded, uh, diverse in its own way, increasingly religious. And the American Jewish community is secure in its own way, although not necessarily security, historically security-minded, less religious, um, and more pluralistic in many regards. So I do think that you have communities which maybe as Shira said, on a parallel track, but they see the world differently. Um, I think what's important to note is, as we move forward, Pittsburgh was a watershed. And so the idea that the younger generation is lost, I deeply disagree with that. They may manifest their Judaism differently. They may pray with their feet more than they pray in shul. But they are absolutely acting on deeply, deeply held Jewish values and Jewish impulses. Um, now, I do think it's critical that we get our arms around how our two communities can support each other more effectively. What we don't need in Israel, and it's so interesting, because I heard this so often when I took this job at ADL, Israelis don't like it when Americans come and lecture them. Americans don't like it when Israelis come to America and lecture us. Lecturing us after Pittsburgh and telling us that we were exaggerating 
the instances of anti-Semitism, as literally an Israeli minister told me, not helpful. Telling us that, again, many of uh, American Jews are lost because they're intermarrying or because their degree of practice isn't recognized by the rabbinate here, not helpful. So I have great faith in American Judaism and the American Jews. We are entrepreneurial. We are inventive. We will continue to interpret the faith in a way that might not follow the halakhical interpretations of some members of the rabbinate, but it will be vibrant, it will be dynamic, and it will be deeply Jewish. Uh, Shira, the Ruderman Foundation has, uh, as I mentioned, made strengthening the relationships between, uh, the relationship between American Jews and Israel one of its primary areas of focus. Um, uh, uh, some people here may not be familiar with some of those initiatives, if you could allude to, uh, relate to them briefly, but also uh, I'm interested in what the Israeli government, what your expectations or requests or desires of the Israeli government and people's participation in the efforts uh, that the Ruderman Foundation, sort of on behalf of the American Jewish community, are putting forward are to make this uh, effort successful. So, <clears throat> is this working? Um, before I answer this uh, question, I just want to maybe echo Please. a couple things that Jonathan said, which I think maybe relate to, you know, the general, why is it I, a national security matter? It's, um, I think it's crucial that we have this conversation in this setting and not in other settings, because if we lose each other, if we see it as a challenge or a crisis, if we agree or disagree on the solutions, but at the end of the day, if we lose each other because we couldn't find the common language or because we could not be respectful enough and caring enough to understand the challenges, I think this is, I don't want to say almost the end of us because I'm an optimistic person, but this will be a point that it will be hard to recover. So if we don't see it in the eyes of a national security, because this is not just the state of Israel, this is the homeland of the Jewish people, meaning that no matter what will be the challenge that Jews around the world will have, and no matter what successful life they would have, Israel will always be connected to their story and their identity. So I do think it is crucial for us as a state, as people, to understand why is it needed and necessary and our responsibility to come to the table, to find solutions, and of course the government, and of course the political leaders are part of it. Bougie said before, and I could not agree more than that, this has to be part of their political view. We have to demand as Israelis and as American jury that no political you know, movement or party uh, can exclude the conversation, what will be your perspective, not on pluralism, because this is too personal, on a relationship, what you're gonna do to understand that you represent Jewish people in many settings, and therefore, what will be the language that we agree together. And I also think it's our responsibility to make the framework to where when you're not an Israeli citizen, you maybe cannot have a full share in some decisions. And maybe it will be painful to make this decision, uh, but we have to because part of the challenge that Jonathan raised is that we don't have boundaries. So when American jury agree or disagree with America, they make it uh, with Israel, they make it loud and clear, and it's not always clear to the state of Israel what is the role in this particular situation. And I think it caused more tension and more uh, division between us versus unity or respect or understanding. The last thing I would say, and I'm gonna quickly answer your question, that, and I am gonna be a bit critical, although I am an American myself, I split my life, live in Boston, raise American kids, married to an American. Um, I would say that one of the things I sense that is lacking in our Jewish communities is to be self-critical a little bit too. We are very good to criti criticize Israel when it comes to any issue. We're not that good to
to criticize ourselves, meaning the fact that we're not unified, the fact that we do not necessarily cooperate with each other, the fact that we are very divisive or divided today on any issue that American Jewry you know, is dealing with. And I think if the state of Israel has to deal with this division, of course they'll take advantage. Because each time, a different community, a different leader, a different organization challenge the state of Israel. So they respond by personal relationship, personal knowledge, and not necessarily responsibility. So the Rudiman Family Foundation did recognize this gap and the need. So what we decided to do is to educate, as you heard, you know, uh, to educate our leaders. We take once a year a mission of, you know, members of Knesset, journalists, to come and face and to listen, not to talk, not to lecture, not to criticize, literally for a week of learning, American jury, all issues, all voices, all you know, um, opportunities that we can afford to, I mean, we can uh, share with them. The other thing we do, we educate Israelis through the Haifa University as a master's degree. We have a caucus in the Knesset. We're thinking, you know, we do campaigns to educate, create the bonding because, you know, sharing is caring, and caring means to take actions. Thank you. Those, are, those initiatives are all uh, extremely impactful for anybody who has taken part in them, as I had the pleasure to do in, at the University of Haifa. Uh, Jane, you know, one of the pillars of the American Jewish community support for Israel uh, uh, and American support more broadly has been that it crosses many communal lines. It's bipartisan, uh, it's interdenominational, uh, it has broad institutional support. Um, uh, that's getting harder, uh, among the reasons President Obama, I recall, uh, was concerned about the Prime Minister's speech in the, Knesset, in the Congress in 2015 about the Iran deal was because it might uh, inflame partisan divisions around the state of Israel. Uh, I think we've seen more and more of that in the era of Trump, and there are things happening in my own party uh, that uh, raise concern for me about that. Uh, and of course, the pendulum is, is going to swing both ways. Um, in that context, uh, you know, what do Israelis need to understand about the evolutions in the American Jewish community? Political, but also religious, cultural. What, what do we, you've you referred to those uh, evolutions and, and what sort of all, all sides need to do uh, to try to maintain that broad uh, identification uh, as those evolutions unfold? Well, thank you. I, I think you're right to pinpoint uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech to Congress in 2015. Um, that was a source of great, great anxiety for American Jews. Remember, the American Jewish uh, voter uh, overwhelmingly supported uh, President Obama twice. Uh, this was a signature um, policy for him, and I think the fact that it was perceived that the Prime Minister went around the White House to speak to Congress in a very belligerent tone really uh, made American Jews feel like they had to choose they had to choose between the president that they really supported and the state of Israel, which they really supported. And that level of anxiety, I think, uh, has not gone away. It's frankly, it's gotten more pronounced because of the close relationship between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Trump. And I think you've seen this movement away from Israel feeling like there was a, um, a bipartisan consensus. And um, I think it's very hard, especially to tell younger people uh, who very much have their own sense of identity, very fluid identity, uh, that they have to support a, a government that they might not necessarily agree with just because. I, I don't think that's gonna work anymore. Um, and so I think that there needs to be much more of a recognition that most American Jews feel very Jewish, but also feel very American. And that means um, feeling like a minority in a very large country uh, in which other minorities uh, are being discriminated against even more so than ours are, are than we are. Um, I think it means that values of tolerance and pluralism are really important. You know, there were um, a series of polls that the Pew Research Center did, both of American Jews and of Israeli Jews, and then uh, looked at the um, differences in their responses. And it was really fascinating. You know, the 
vast majority of American Jews think that to be Jewish means to live a moral and ethical life. The vast majority of American Jews think that to be Jewish means to working for social justice and equality. And when you asked Israeli Jews those questions, it was a big minority. Uh, there's a big gap between what it means to feel Jewish in America for most Jews. And I think Israelis may not understand that because the current administration is basically dominated by what we would say modern Orthodox Jews, uh, both within the president's family and his cabinet. Um, and that is an important segment of the American, pub American Jewish population, but a very small one, very small. And, um, and so we have the political representatives of the United States interacting with the state of Israel, um, but the ones from the United States only represent, in many ways, a minority of American Jews. So I think we really need to have a better understanding and respect for the way American Jews interact with America at large, and then through them, that, I hope, be able to have a much more honest dialogue about Israel. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, you alluded, uh, both you and Jane alluded to the uh, massacre in Pittsburgh and the Tree of Life Synagogue, uh, and you talked about the Israeli government's uh, reaction to that. In fact, just I think uh, this week, the diaspora ministry has put out some statistics that suggest that, in fact, uh, at least at the moment, uh, the right wing uh, anti-Semitism is the source of the main violence, at least that uh, Jews have experienced. Uh, at the same time, there is a left-wing uh, phenomenon of anti-Semitism, and it sometimes takes expression through the BDS movement. Um, how uh, are uh, those events affecting uh, the relationships uh, between the two communities, and uh, what can Israel do uh, differently or better? How might they respond to those challenges in ways that strengthen, uh, strengthen the bonds? Okay, so. I'll respond to the question. I do want to respond a little bit to what Jane talked about, though. Um, I will say this. I'm sitting up here next to Dan, and I am like Dan. I want to speak for you. But I am very proud of my public service in the Obama administration. You can speak for me. OK, there you go. Very proud. But I disagree with Jane with the presumption that Bibi's speech before Congress created a situation in which American Jews felt that they had to choose. Because I was outside running the ADL, and I was watching surrogates who were arguing on behalf of the Iran deal, our friends from Nyack and other places, who said, you have to choose. You are for the deal or you are for war. That was what they said. So I don't think it's fair to say that American Jews felt like they had to choose. The rhetoric on those who were arguing for the deal, and that's something Dan and I might not have agreed on, was saying I was a warmonger because I was opposed to the deal. So I just want to clarify that. I don't think it's fair to say that Jews felt like we had to choose. We were being told, and you, I can give you the quotes from the press from that time, from your paper, by the way, the forward. Um, and I think that's really important to note. So politics today are very fraught in the US and very polarized and people are really on edge. And I think the situation in Pittsburgh and the situation with anti-Semitism calls that up and it's sort of implicit in your question. So indeed at the ADL, we fight anti-Semitism in all forms of hate. Indeed at the ADL, we saw a 57% increase in anti-Semitic attitudes, in t excuse me, incidents in 2017. Acts of harassment, vandalism, and violence. And then in 2018, we just released a report last week that looked at, we do this every year, extremism and um, murders. And extremist-related murders in the US in 2018 were overwhelmingly committed by people espousing an extreme right-wing ideology. That's not my opinion, that's sort of the facts. White supremacists, white supremacists neo-Nazis and their ilk. And of those murders, you know, like 34% were Jews. We're 2% of the population, yet we were disproportionately represented in number of deaths at the hands of extremists in 2018. So anti-Semitism, in terms of attitudes, has been at about 10 to 15% of the population in the US for some time. So attitudes are low. When ADL started tracking attitudes back in the 60s, it was close to 30%. Now it's down 10 to 15. So that's really the good news. The bad news is that extremists feel emboldened and they're acting out more and more. 
and they are vandalizing and assaulting in all of this. And uh, indeed, we have seen the emboldenment of right-wing extremism as a real threat. Now, here's the thing. Right-wing extremists aren't American conservatives in any traditional sense. Any more than left-wing radicals represent the liberal establishment in the US. So I think we need to keep in mind that these extremists don't speak for the majority of people from that side of the political spectrum. We need to keep in mind that extremists are about ideology, not about political party. And we need to realize that neither side of the spectrum has a monopoly on morality. So some people on the left point to the right, some people on the right point to the left. As far as I see it, extremism of any form is a problem. So then the question becomes, what can the Israeli government do to help? Help the US, uh, help American Jews to combat anti-Semitism. I would say there are probably a couple things. So number one, don't lecture, but listen. Right, don't lecture us, but listen. Um, coming to the United States and talking to American Jews and trying to understand how can they help with issues of communal security? How can they help organizations like the ADL, which already monitors social media? So listen to what we need rather than lecturing. And secondly, I think something that's really important is embracing the diversity and the pluralism of American Jews. Don't just show up for a funeral. I mean, let me, let me step back. For Israeli elected officials, I mean specifically the political leadership, don't just show up for a funeral or an APAC conference. Show up at a reform synagogue and, and give a drosh. Show up for a communal seder, right, and talk about what that means in a modern context. Find ways to engage with American Jews where they are and embrace all of them, regardless of how they vote or how they pray or who they love, regardless of domestic politics over here. That would send a very powerful message, I think, to our community. Thank you. We, we just have a couple of minutes left. Uh, if anybody wants to respond to something they've heard from another panelist, that's fine. But I, I, I would just ask sort of uh, for kind of closing remarks, uh, you know, we are in this uh, very polarized era of politics. Uh, there's no question that you have this uh, very clear division between Israeli attitudes about uh, Obama and Trump and American Jewish attitudes about Obama and Trump. Roughly two thirds of American Jews voted for Obama, don't, don't support Trump. and the, uh, Israelis have, generally speaking, uh, the reverse attitudes about them. How much is that a, a, a symptom uh, of this uh, divide that we're dealing with? How much is it a cause of it? Uh, and how does the Israeli government need to think about how to navigate uh, its relations between a U.S. government, who, whoever it is, it has to have the best possible relationships with, uh, and uh, this American Jewish community, which remains a critical pillar and, and, and part of, a, of one people? I'll, I'll throw that to whoever would like to take that share. So, um, as we said that we have two parallel roads that are happening in the same time, it will be true to the same point that you just described. You know, American Jewry um, and I would say the leadership of the State of Israel has two um, ways to look at the relationship. One is what's happening between Jerusalem to Washington, which is extremely important. And American Jewry has a role in this particular um, relationship, which is different than their relationship with the State of Israel. And I think to maybe from our end to understand the contribution, the, you know, the necessity of us as a state having such a strong, powerful Jewish community that has the ability, regardless who the president is, um, to be part and to be included is something that we cannot take for granted and do nothing other than to support. I just want to say that it's hard just to listen because one difference we have between us, and this is you know, something that maybe because of our equal size, uh, we tend to forget because of the successful Jewish community in terms of wealth and um, being a simulated part, not religiously, uh, more from a nationality part in the United States, makes us forget that we are a state. We're not a community. We are not independent to make just a decision that is uh, based on philanthropy, money, or voluntarily uh, choices of people. And therefore, the dynamic is very different. Um, and as a result of it, we at times feel the need, maybe what American Jewry experience is to lecture, is more to own the responsibility. I'll conclude by saying that 
you know, the responsibility is on the two of us. We cannot expect any side to be more responsible. We have to, at times, put our ego aside, and there is ego on both sides of the aisle, um, to put aside and to understand that our peoplehood and our state and our relationship is beyond the moment. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm a journalist, so I'm not here to sort of offer policy prescriptions. Um, for me, I think about this almost personally. Um, I look at Israeli culture as separate from the political um, and uh, see this incredibly vibrant entrepreneurial country, a country that really seems to value family and family life. You know, where even my most secular Israeli friends will gather with their children on a Friday night no matter what. Um, believe me, this doesn't happen in America. <laughs> I wish it would more. And I think that American Jews can learn so much about the kind of society that uh, Israel is creating. And similarly, I think Israeli Jews can learn from American Jews about how to live with people who aren't like you, <laughs> who don't look like you, um, who may worship differently. Uh, and look at the world differently. And, and we've gotten good at that over the centuries. And I think that that is a value too. So perhaps what we can try to do is just identify these aspects of our social and cultural life uh, that, that really enhance us as human beings and enhance us as Jews and recognize that we actually can learn from each other at that very, very basic level. Jonathan. I think both Shira and Jane have, have, have offered wonderfully. I mean, I, I really like what they both had to say. Uh, so I don't have that much more to add. I mean, I'm very optimistic. I mean, we live in this moment of, you know, Taglit and Shluchim and, and Fauda and Gal Gadot. And like there is more Israeli imports to the U or exports to the U.S. cultural and, and people and what that we've ever seen before. And in this globalized world, I mean, I feel very confident about the abilities of our Jewish community in the US to understand Israeli identity and for Israelis to understand American Jewish identity. So although there are some challenges, I mean, I'm actually very hopeful about what the future portends. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all the panelists. I think I, I'll also close on an optimistic note by saying that uh, uh, while there's no question that uh, I think, uh, as we heard from Bougie, uh, and as this panel uh, represents uh, the focus uh, that this issue needs, both within the American Jewish community leadership and I think the rank and file and within Israel uh, is now uh, coming to the fore and there are some new initiatives uh, designed to address uh, how to keep these communities close together. But the fact that it can now be established also as a national security issue for the state of Israel, uh, thanks to this study, thanks to the work of INSS, uh, I hope we'll keep it very prominent uh, in the discussions at that level of, uh, of Israeli national security decision makers. And INSS, I'm uh, very confident, will continue its work uh, in that regard as well. So thank you, everybody.